Today's video is a special and unique video dedicated to all fathers who use their amazing anatomical parts in order to create you, a little human minion. This is your father's side of your creation story. Dads do a lot. They go to work, they mow the lawn, they fix things, and they clean up poop from a dog they never actually wanted. But dads do something else. Carry another burden, if you will. Each day, fathers carry around testicles. Two of them, to be exact. Oh, the burden of sperm production. Little does anyone know that while fathers are busy doing all of these other things, they are also working extremely hard to produce sperm cells every second of every day at an alarmingly high rate. Millions per day. This is a testicle or testis, similar to the one your father has. This is the inside of said testis. And if you look closely, you can see these string-like structures called seminiferous tubules. And inside these tubules is where your father produced sperm, and therefore you. At least half of you are part of you. 23 chromosomes of you if we're getting technical. But once created, you did not have much time. You were sent to Swim Academy. Swim Academy was located in your father's epididymis. This C-shaped structure is where you matured, prepared, and awaited to be called upon. And then, one day, while father was of course carrying all these many burdens, he looked upon your mother and thought, it's time, and said to her, it is time for the fruits of my labor and loins to be recognized. And mother, of course, thinking that nine months of pregnancy is a completely fair trade for all of dad's hard work of creating sperm cells, said, yes, let us unify our gametes. Or more realistically, it was dad's birthday which allowed for such special interactions or activities. Or, you were an in vitro baby, which in that case, you were called upon in a much less romantic way. Nonetheless, you were still a noble sperm cell. But regardless of the exact mechanism of stimulation, you were still peacefully awaiting in the epididymis. But suddenly the alarm sounded, letting your spermy little self know that it was time for you to take action, time for you to leave the epididymal swim academy, time for you to be released on your journey. And as the chaos subsided, you found yourself in a new place, a quiet place, an unfamiliar place, a treacherous place, an acidic environment designed to keep out and destroy pathogens and foreign invaders. You were in the vagina. How were you to survive this harsh environment? How were you to complete this journey? But alas, your father hadn't forgotten you because he came equipped with seminal vesicles, two glands that coated you in an armor of alkalinity prior to release so that you could resist any acidic vaginal canal. Not only did he provide you with armor, but his seminal vesicles also provided you with provisions of fructose so that you could have sustenance to produce high quality ATP in order to power your flagellum. And as you began swimming with your flagellum, you moved up the vaginal canal and you noticed a circular opening. And you remembered from epididymal training school that this was called the cervical os and that you should pass through. And as you passed through and entered the cervix of the uterus, you were coated in cervical mucus, which further protected you from the acidic environment and replenished your provisions. You then moved into the expansion, the body of the uterus, and you looked around at this expansive organ and thought to yourself, this is a really nice place. I could live here for weeks at a time maybe even 38 to 40 weeks. But you could not distract yourself with such nonsense at this time. You had a mission and you continued and you pushed towards a small tubular opening and entered a tube-like structure. And at this point, you are being overwhelmed with exhaustion and your mind began to wander. And you thought, why in the world would they name a structure that's in a female after some dude? Why call it the fallopian tube instead of something more logical like the uterine tube. But you continued and you moved up this uterine tube and you noticed that your sibling sperm cells started falling off by the wayside, sperm carcasses everywhere, and you thought that you might give up as well. But you pushed on as you noticed something in the distance. And as you continued to swim, this something became more clear. This was a circular, large object, much larger than you, and it felt as though it was calling to you, beckoning you, like it could complete you, like it might be your 
other half? Could this be the egg, the ovum that you were looking for? Yes! And you quickly noticed that your remaining sperm siblings greatly increased their speed, and you thought, no! I am dad's favorite sperm cell. I am going to win this race. And you engage your flagellum with all of your might, burning through every last molecule of ATP, and then... Thanks for watching our goofy rendition on how dads contributed to creating you. Yes, we joked around about treacherous structures and compared dad to mom being pregnant 38 to 40 weeks and going through labor, etc. But dads do so many amazing things nonetheless. And today, being Father's Day, let's take the time to say thank you and honor our dads. Please comment below like you normally do, but we'd also love to hear about what your dad has done to make your life better. So throw that in the comments as well, and happy Father's Day.